Welcome to another edition of Getting to Know Your Indiana Neighbor. And if you're from our neck of the woods, everybody knows this neighbor. She's the first lady of Ligoti Lion basketball, the wife of head coach Jack Butcher, Mrs. Rita Butcher. She's got her own story to tell, and we're going to hear all about it in just a moment. Now, a lot of times after I sit down and have a discussion, the subject will say, oh, I wish I would have said this. I wish I would have remembered to talk about that. Well, I've got you covered, Mrs. Butcher. She wanted to make sure that uh, she thanked, and she forgot to do so, but that she thanked Farrell Armstrong and Dan Armstrong, her late husband, for taking her to all of those road games over the years. So thank you, Farrell, from Mrs. Butcher. Seven children, all athletes in their own right, for sure. But uh, boy, she does have a story, and we're going to listen to it right now. Our next Indiana neighbor, Mrs. Rita Butcher, right now. Welcome to another Getting to Know Your Indiana Neighbor, and those of you in my neighborhood know this neighbor, and that is Mrs. Jack Butcher, Rita Butcher. And we're going to find out more about Rita Butcher today because she's got a story. And Mrs. Butcher, I remember when I was walking up Walker Street passing you and stopped you and said, what do you think about being my Indiana neighbor? I could tell you were taken aback a little bit, for just sure, a just a little bit. <laughs> but then I, I kind of saw something in your eyes that said, well, I've got a story to tell. And it took you a little while to get back to me. Um, have you got a story to tell? Well, I guess I do. <laughs> well, we'll find out. Bit. I'll ask some questions, and, and uh, I know we will. But, you know, I was thinking about, has anybody ever suggested that you write a book? Um, not really. Not really? I guess, well, I, have, I would say someone has, but uh, I never had any intentions of doing so. I helped Jack write that one, and that was enough for me. <laughs> he, uh, did you ever uh, write down a journal for yourself as you went along all, through all these years? No, I didn't. Uh, I wish I had them. Mm -hmm. I you know, I've, I've got a couple of names for your book. Uh, how about Butcher Ball? It's not all about basketball. That's <laughs> one. All right. Yeah. And then I'm taking one from... I, you might remember the year. I want to think. I want to say 1990 it was one of the uh, celebrations after a tournament win, and uh, Coach said from a very popular song about that time that you were the wind beneath his wings. Do you remember that? Oh yes. I just always remember that, and uh, was always touched by that. And I thought that made so much sense. So how about the wind beneath his wings? There you go. I've got. I've got it for you. You'll have to write it, but I've got it. Since this is getting to know your neighbor, we're going to find out a little bit more about Mrs. Butcher. Let's start from the beginning. Your childhood, uh, where were you born, who were you born to, and your siblings? Well, I was born in Ligoti in the house I grew up in. Uh, my parents were Frank and Anne Marie Jones. I had uh, three sisters and one brother. And uh, we lived in a four-room house. Uh, we had uh, just the living room and mother and dad's bedroom and the kitchen. The, and then the one big bedroom where the four girls stayed. We had two beds in that one room. Four girls? Yes. Yeah. Of course, my, bro my brother Mike, I guess I should name them. Yeah, if you would. Wilma was the oldest, and then Mary Ruth, and then myself. Well, I was after Wilma, then Mary Ruth and Ann, and then my brother Mike. They've all passed away except Mike. He is still living. He lives here in Magoti too. But uh, we, like I said, we were girls slept in that one bedroom. Um, but we didn't have a bathroom. We had the outhouse, and the house was heated by a pot belly stove. <laughs> and I remember it. Uh, I used to suffer with the uh, earache, uh -huh. and my mother would put a cloth on that pop belly stove and I'd put it up against my ear and that's how my ears go air I'd go away. But I had those until I was about six until Doctor Strange took out my tonsils there in his office. So then that kinda cured my ear trouble. But uh um my dad had six siblings and they lived up the street from us. Uh, one of them was married, was Harriet, and her family lived there too. But you knew all the others, I'm sure. You knew uh, uh, 
well, my dad and then Paul, he didn't live around here. And then we had Edgar and Gurdon and, and uh, Joe. So Joe has a little, the Jones girls, I'm sure you know. All I, them. I, I do. And, and I know those people you spoke of, but I didn't know that they were. Yeah, they're yeah. relatives. And also uh, on uh, Marilyn Cunningham is another mm -hmm. relative. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then on mother's side, she was a Cody, and she also had six siblings. Uh, her oldest brother, James, they lived in Iowa. But then when he came back after the kids were fairly growing, and they, some, some of them went to school at Bar Reed, uh, that's, he lived out on the farm with mom and dad, mm -hmm. with the grandpa and grandpa, mm -hmm. mom and dad. And then, uh, of course, uh, her brother had uh, girls, uh, had four girls and two boys. So I had all those cousins, Anna Lou Matthias. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was one. Marilyn Birch. Marilyn and, Birch. Yeah. And then the other two girls lived away from here and mm -hmm. so to the mm -hmm. two boys. So where, lots of cousins. Where did you grow up? Here in Lagodi. What, what was it in, in the town? Yeah. It's on the, well, really. It was Broadway Street. Broadway, okay. Yeah, we lived right across from the Arrow Cafe. Oh, you did? Yes. Okay. And then I, uh, of course, my, the Godey family lived out on the farm. Uh, they always was in the St. Mary's area. Mm -hmm. So we loved to go out to the farm. Uh, of course, we had to have somebody take us because we didn't have mm -hmm. a vehicle. But we would go out there occasionally, and that was always a good time. They had kerosene lamps upstairs. We had to go upstairs to sleep, and then they had all the chickens and the fruit. And uh, so we really enjoyed going out there. Grandma Goody had one of my favorite things out there was her biscuits and her cherry. She make cook the cherries and have them with the hot biscuits for breakfast. In the morning. Well, that that sounds good. My my wife's granny who's long since passed and down there in that part of kentucky they made chocolate gravy were you ever familiar with that i've heard of it I've never uh, had it. it's a delicacy i guess it's, it's a taste you have to acquire but uh, they love it but uh, it's it's chocolate gravy it's chocolate gravy it, do, it doesn't sound <laughs> no, no, good no, to me sounds biscuit, give me biscuits and gravy like but cherry sounds pretty good <laughs> yeah. uh, you know you mentioned the arrow cafe and i know it's as you get a little bit older but as I talked to my dad over the years, and then mom, I mean, what an institution that was for, for young kids like you and Coach, and that uh, that must have been a heck of a time. It was, We uh, especially when we were in high school. Mm -hmm. That's where we thought everybody would go after the ball game. Yeah. And of course, everybody went to the ball games, and then all the mm -hmm. uh, high school kids would gather there, and then the team would come because mm -hmm. They usually had a little bit of money that they let them spend at the Arrow Cafe. Or... Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, Coach had mentioned that he came from a very poor family. How would you describe your family in that in that way? We were lucky. Um, it was Depression time, but my dad worked at a grocery store. He worked for Nick Matthews Grocery Store. Um, and where was that? Well, it was on... Uh, West Main, where the boutique is now, mm -hmm. it was my next to Gussie Clemens' restaurant. Okay. And uh, that he wore that. Of course, you know, during in the war, they had all these uh, stamps that you had to have mm -hmm. to buy food with. Mm -hmm. But uh, we never did the uh, black for anything. Uh, it wasn't always, you know, maybe sometimes a lot of beans and soup and things yeah. like that. But... Uh, since Dad worked at the grocery store, well, he would. Uh, we were lucky there. Mm -hmm. yeah. What well, What was your interest as a child growing up? What What did you do on a on a daily basis? I assume you had some chores, first of all. Yes, yes, we did have chores. I used to cut the grass in the summertime. I don't know. Uh, I don't think my other sisters ever cut the grass, but I uh, <laughs> I like cutting the grass. Of course, we didn't have that big a yard until after we stopped putting out a. They put out a garden. Um, but then, uh, when, uh, well, we always cleaned on Saturday, cleaned the house and, and then, uh, I learned to iron by ironing handkerchiefs mm -hmm. and pillowcases and, 
just things like that. Of course, we did the dishes. Do you remember when you first got your driver's license back then? Was it at an age 16 or tell me a little bit about what you remember your, your first driving experiences to be? Well, no, it was after I graduated from, from high school. Okay. Before, because we didn't have a car until I think I was a junior. And my your, sister, your family didn't? No. Okay. Um, Mayor Ruth uh, learned how to drive. Richard had taught her. Mm -hmm. So she taught me, helped me. Taught me. And then, uh, Richard Clements, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. okay. And then uh, Dad helped me some. But uh, I remember I dreaded going over to take the test, you know, how they talk about having parallel park and all that. Oh, stuff. Still, still gives me. Yeah, <laughs> the heebie jeebies. But when I went over to take my test, all I had to do was drive around the block. <laughs> Yeah. So, so you made it. I made it, and uh, <laughs> I uh, really have had mm -hmm. no, you know, accidents. I guess mm -hmm. um, it, the only thing that upset me was that uh, I had went to the grocery store. Uh, Jack was home with the kids. It was in the evening, and I was driving back home, and the police stopped me, and I had my brights on in town. Oh, uh, okay. So I got okay. a ticket for that. So that's that of was... all these years, that's that's all it was in regards. <laughs> yeah, you got a ticket. They gave you a ticket for that. A ticket for it. Do you remember who the officer was? Yes, Bill Drake. Bill, <laughs> Bill Drake? Drake's dad. Bill Drake's dad. Okay. <laughs> the ironic part about it was, I think Jack had helped him get his job because he needed a job mm -hmm. to keep his uh, son in yeah. Ligoti or in Crane. Mm -hmm. He lived in Crane. But he's just trying to keep us safe. Oh, right? yeah. Okay. yeah. So when did you go to St. John? Yes. yes. And um, Coach went to Ligoti? Yes. So well, did... he went to St. John's in grade school. And then he went okay. To so so you knew him growing up. Is that yes. right? Because do you mind telling the folks how old you're going to be in what? February of next year? February the 14th. I will be 90. 90. Uh, you know, Donna told me that a couple <laughs> days ago. I had no idea. I never, never would have thought that you were 90. Coach is going to be 90 as well, right? right? Yeah. But uh, why? He's older than I am. Oh, you like to put that in there. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's, uh, that's, that's amazing. And still get out and walk. And, uh, well, I haven't much been until this summer. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I hope to get back to it. Mm -hmm. This last month or so, I had not been able to be out. And then, of course, with the heat, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. But we do have the treadmill that I, I use. You know, sometimes when, especially the winter, it's when real windy or cold yeah. and snowy, well, yeah. they use the treadmill. Well, I mean, we're we're down here in uh, the museum of, of Coach and <laughs> Mrs. Butcher, and, and there's some stairs that they have to come down and negotiate. So, uh, kudos to them how they do it, but uh, they do, and this is this is wonderful. You're going to be seeing a lot of pictures as as we go along as well. But so so you knew Coach Butcher. But at what point do you remember, I don't know if getting serious is the right word, but starting to go with Coach and, and uh, starting to get a little serious with him. Do you remember well, that? <laughs> I had to learn to like him again. Now, wait a minute. I, <laughs> when we were in uh, grade school, he liked to shoot paper blood. <laughs> and I was <laughs> one of his targets. You were one of his targets? You know why, don't you? Yeah. He was sweet on yeah, you. That's what they yeah. tell me. Yeah. That's what. Was, but uh, one of the major things was uh, when we leave the school, they all just had to line up, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, he would get it behind me. Mm -hmm. And one day he was behind me and he stepped on my shoe. <laughs> and it was my. On purpose. <laughs> yes, my, new, my brown and white Oscar. Okay. Then it split them. Oh. And one of them. Not a good idea. And, no. And I love those brown and white mm -hmm. officers. And they tell me I went home and I says, I hate that Jack Butcher. <laughs> <laughs> so I really, really did at that time. And then what was it? I had a little beanie that used to, kids used to wear at school. And he stole that and <laughs> came back with it and had a great big safety pin stuck in the top of it. So oh. those were his. Uh, all I right. guess that was our courtship. And then uh, <laughs> I guess it was the summer after the eighth grade, uh, we started uh, 
where we didn't do much, had dates, yeah. maybe one Sunday afternoon yeah. had to go to the mm-hmm. to the movies. And then... Uh, what did he do to get back into your graces? Well, <laughs> I really don't remember that. He just <laughs> seemed nicer, I guess, or he just grew on me, I guess. <laughs> but uh, he was pretty good, a pretty yeah. nice guy anyway. But uh, you, you, uh, I assume you had a date or two at the Ritz Theater. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. we did. Very special place for yeah. both of you. I certainly know Coach. Yeah. Jack, yes. He, yeah. Yeah, he worked there all the time. Uh, what movie do you remember from the Ritz Theater that whenever you were a child growing up, maybe it scared you or had an impact um, on you? Uh, Sergeant York. Sergeant York, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. school went to that one, I know. Okay. Seen it, not, oh, it's been a few years ago. They re- Still on. And on Still on, yeah. But, mm-hmm. yeah, that was something. Mm-hmm. And, uh, um, but uh, we, like I say, we went to the, the Lions Den, the KC. That's where everybody went. The Lions Den, yes, okay. What they call it, it's the basement of the KC. Mm-hmm. And Frisky and George and Ars were the, First ones that the couple that opened it and was there. Okay. Where she, you know, you could buy cokes and mm-hmm. snacks, and they had a ping pong table there, and they had a jukebox. And food. now, when you went to St. John's High School, was there not a basketball team at that time? No. But shortly after that, um, right? Yeah, I think. Uh, well, I graduated in '51, and I and. Uh, um, Two years before that, I think they started with the boys. Mm-hmm. So did you go to the Lagodi games then, since oh, that was yeah. the only game in town? Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> First one in mine. Really? Came until the door opened. Right? Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and and why is that? I mean, uh, yeah. because of him? <laughs> <laughs> Love those strange things. Yes, On does. a cold winter night, yes. right? That's yes. amazing. That's and, amazing. Uh, That's fantastic. Yeah, we so, went on. Mm-hmm. And so did you so did you go with each other pretty much all through high school? Yes. All right. So Coach Butcher obviously after high school had a very good college career. And this is this is well noted, but I want to get this from you, your perspective, that uh there've been a lot of him made of him being drafted by the Boston Celtics. Uh take me through that time and the conversations that you may have had, if there were any, that led you back here instead of to Boston. Boston. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know that we discussed it that much i i know he wanted to coach <clears throat> and uh, he just didn't think well one of the main things was the money aspect of it mm-hmm. and Isn't that he yeah. traveling yeah. and uh, we already had the two kids at the time and i think i was pregnant with carlene so so that was just basically and i don't know where he know knew very much, but I didn't know very much about pro mm-hmm. basketball. We didn't watch it. We didn't have yeah. <laughs> but we did have a television, I guess, but I didn't watch it. That yeah, much. I mean, it, my conversation with, with Bobby Plump, it was kind of the same way. That that wasn't an aspiration of anybody, right, to play yeah. uh, National Basketball Association. Now, the money today, a little bit different, but, but back <laughs> then. So, so he comes back. Now, he was in the service, correct? Yes, he was in the service for a year. Right after Memphis State? Yeah, well, no, he went two years at Memphis, and then he was drafted. Oh, okay. So, and then uh, he went in 53, and then we got married in 54. That was after uh, Grand War. Mm-hmm. The day he was to go, before he was to go in, they signed the armistice. So, he didn't have to go to... Mm-hmm. But you thought you were going to have to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, did uh, you go with him in those in that year to two years? Uh, no, no. The first year, he was different places, but then we got married in June of 54. He had been in a year, and then the, after that, he was stationed at Fort Knox, unless they went on maneuvers. Mm-hmm. So we had an apartment uh, on North Line Street. Okay. I don't you say it was we called it the Faye Jones apartment. I, right? I, I'm, well, was that upstairs. the same as the Faye Boer apartment? Yes. Same? I, th- I think my parents might have lived there at one well, point in time. They, they might have, yes. Yeah. So we lived there, and then he would drive back on the weekend mm-hmm. at a three year, at a three day pass mm-hmm. or something. So then uh, when he got out, I guess they would have been in 55, June of 55, we went back to Memphis, and I went with him then, and we had a 
small apartment. Very well, it was very nice. It was a nice little apartment, not very big, but it was behind a person's house, and it had a stream, and they had birds mm -hmm. in the trees, and it was really nice. Mm -hmm. But then I was pregnant with Noreen at that time, so he stayed. At, I came home in September when she was born, and Jack was in school. So then after she was born, well, he went back, and he didn't have any place to live mm -hmm. anyway, bless his heart. So, didn't so, have any place to live? No, we drove to, back to Memphis. Mm -hmm. It took Marina. She was, wasn't quite six weeks old, I don't think, maybe a month. But, uh, then uh, we stayed in the motel that first night, and then we found a... Um, Apartment was part of another house. It was a big old house, but uh, it had a really small bathroom and then the living room and, bath and the yeah. bedroom were all together. <laughs> think, think about what she just said. So they have Marina. She's six weeks old. They don't have a place to live, but they, they drive down there staying in a motel, six weeks old, mm -hmm. right? But that was, I, I don't know whether that was unusual or not, but you just did what you had to do, right? Yeah, I just didn't really think. Right. I, <laughs> right. So then uh, we stayed there for, I think, about a half a year, and then we went to Bet Village. It was on the campus. Of the, mm -hmm. So we lived there for the, for the next year. So. Do you have fond memories of Memphis? Or, it, was, or, or is it... it was nice, yes. Um, I really didn't. Uh, well, I had Marina, and then we had Bill when we were down there. So I didn't have a whole lot of time. Mm -hmm. right. But... Uh, it was nice. Uh, the campus was nice, and when the place close by that had the stores, and mm -hmm. you called it not it was normal, and the church was right there too, St. Anne's, and uh, so it was all pretty much compact. We didn't go down mm -hmm. Memphis very much, except there was a <laughs> when we first went down there. First time I went down there with him. We went downtown to a movie, and then <laughs> we came after the movie's over. Of course, it was dark, and it was. And Jack said it was almost out of gas because we were down there in, in uh, that section. And I, at that time, I had never been around yeah. very many yeah. black people right. at the time, although I didn't know anything about them really. Mm -hmm. And so, it scared, uh, you it, so it scared me a little bit. I didn't know where I was at, and we were going to run out again. But we made it back home. So, so uh, the first the first house that I remember that you guys lived in here in Ligoti was on North Line Street, I believe, right? Yes, yeah. we lived there for mm -hmm. uh, well, I'd say about four months while we built this house. Just four months. Yeah. Were you? Were you? Did you just come back? No. We had lived. We lived at Scenic Hill. Scenic Hill. Okay. Yeah, we bought a house okay. uh, at Scenic Hill, and uh, mm -hmm. we really, you know, liked it. It was a great place for the kids. We had all the Jeffersers were there, and all the Dap kids, and the Boos, and the Wildmans, and mm -hmm. you know, knew everybody. Just, yeah. 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 So it was a great place for the kids. They really, but uh, by the time uh, Bob arrived, we were <laughs> out of space. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I remember, that wasn't much bigger, was it? No, no, it wasn't. So then we went into the North Line uh, mm -hmm. Street house on North Line Street, and uh, well, we were building this, and we were building this house the same time they were building the new gym. Is that right? So, so Jack you've been, kept his eye on both of them. He so. kept his eye on both. <laughs> he he built both places. Too. Yes, the house did. that Jack built. <laughs> right. Both so. This house was built when? What year? Six, 68. 68. I remember, it couldn't have been too long after that. I remember being invited to Bernie's birthday party. I'm guessing he was probably eight, maybe. And what I remember about that, Mrs. Butcher, is upstairs, you had balloons. But somehow I got one that wasn't, didn't have helium in it. It was just a regular balloon. And I wrapped it around my finger. Remember, I was only nine or so, whatever it was. And I, it started getting red, really red. <laughs> So you took me under the sink and would run water on it, and somehow we got it out. But, but I, I hate to say that's my memory of this house. <laughs> but, uh, but well, maybe I, this will be better. <laughs> this is better. I this hope. is better. I'm sure it was a great birthday party. <laughs> but, but this, that's what I remember. And, uh, uh, you know, I, I can't say that I grew up being great friends with with, with Bernie. But at the time, uh, we were. If you remember, actually, you may not, but 
we lived over here in the trailer for a brief period of time, right behind where the radio station is now, just a very brief period of time. And, but, but it had such an impact on our lives and everybody, we would do everything with all the kids. So I guess that's how I got invited to the birthday party, but <laughs> you never invited me back. I guess that's the reason why. Well, but, uh, yeah. the one thing about the birthday parties, I let each one of the kids had a birthday on their, when they, we were in the third grade. <laughs> that, so that's probably what it was. Yeah. I was in, would have been a year ahead. That's yeah. probably about right. So. so what was life like for Rita and Jack Butcher off the court here in this house with seven children? <laughs> now, he, he obviously w was working, teacher yeah. and a coach. You worked, I know, for years at the school, but, but what about in those early years? Did I, you stay at home? I stayed at home until Bob went to kindergarten. So Bob went to kindergarten. Yeah, and that was in 68. So I mm -hmm. stayed home when, at home when the kids were growing up. Um, and we had a busy day. I don't, <laughs> to tell you the truth, I don't remember much mm -hmm. of it. Well, that's good. I mean, it was, it was a normal I mean, life, apparently. <laughs> yeah. You don't remember struggling and saying, uh, Coach, you better get home because uh, <laughs> these kids are driving me crazy. I'm sure that did happen a time or two. Well, <clears throat> How many, year, how many years did you work at the school? One seven. And your roles, were, did they vary over the course well, of the year? Well, the first time I, w I was at, uh, well, uh, when they first had the junior high, mm -hmm. they had it over in the old, old yeah. annex, I guess right. what you call it now. <clears throat> and so that's where I started. And at the time, Jack was a principal for a half day. And he was in charge of the same job. Right. Okay. He, not not just a half day high. in tenure. You mean just the first half of the day. Okay. <laughs> first half of the day all year long. <laughs> okay. So at that time, he was principal, and he was teaching, and he was coaching. Uh -huh. So he was doing all that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then they we moved to the, had the junior high built behind the high school, and uh, I went over there. And then I was there up until the time that, uh, well, I was, Charles Laley was the principal most mm -hmm. of the time because Jack was only principal for a year. I think that one year. Coach is over here. So yeah. <laughs> making sure she gets her story straight. Yeah. Yeah. So then uh, yeah. and I Bob Bell was the principal there when I left or when I retired. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned nineteen sixty eight. So nineteen sixty eight St. John School burns down. So all of a sudden now there's a consolidation of the two schools that eventually begins the glory years of basketball. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what we call them. And actually, I, I know Coach would think when he was playing, they had some pretty good glory yeah, years, right? Uh, maybe the first glory year. But uh, but certainly that, that got us on the map. But do you remember discussions during that, be, before the school season, the, the, the school had burned down and you've got new kids coming in. And uh, of course, Junior G was a coach of St. John's. Do you remember any discussions that you and Coach had that, what what's going to happen here or anything like that? No, in fact, <clears throat> we didn't really discuss basketball that much mm -hmm. at home, and uh, we might I'm not a comment or two, but uh, mm -hmm. um, of course we were happy to see the consolidation of the school. Um, I thought that was a good idea, but I think really brought the community together. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just hard for St. John's to support the high school anyway. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, but I know I w had wished they would have kept the grade school. Mm -hmm. and, right. But that was oh, I, I remember I was, I was, yeah, I mean, I was in second grade and I remember at St. John. And I couldn't believe I had to go to Ligoti. And, uh, you know, the public school with those lions, <laughs> that wasn't going to be for me. Yeah. But uh, as I remember, it took no time at all to no. be able to integrate into the school, get new friends. And, 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 and that year was, you know, such a great year. Uh, and it's such, again, such an impact on my life and so many others that uh, it turned out pretty well. Uh, well, I regard. do remember <coughs> Jack commenting on the, <coughs> excuse me, uh, the fact that the kids and the players and the uh, cheerleaders did such a good job of bringing everybody mm -hmm. together. Yeah, because that's, especially when you think about that time in our history, 
1968, right? Probably one of the most volatile times in our, in our history. And, and teenagers were a part of that, but they were able, like you said, to be able to, it could have been, it could have been trouble. Yes, it could have been. But it sounds like yeah. everybody came together and made it work. Mm -hmm. So the challenges that you had with your husband as the coach, he coached sons from, gosh, I'm guessing anywhere from 1972 to 1983, maybe all but a couple of those years. Do you remember that that being a time of angst for you many nights? Because, you know, if you're a parent, you're focused on your kid and how they're feeling, and yet you've got your coach yelling at the player and it's your son. Do, do you remember those conflicts? Well, I do. Um, <coughs> uh, they uh, worked all pretty well together, I think. Uh, one of the things, if Jack wanted to talk to basketball with the boys, he took him to the gym. He didn't talk to him about it. Not at, at the at dinner all. table? No, if there's anything concerning them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and about other players. That, were, mm -hmm. that wasn't discussed. So that made it a, a lot easier. Uh, I remember one thing one year when Bob was playing. He and Bernie were both playing. I think uh, maybe he might have been a sophomore, Bob had. And uh, he uh, had stopped shooting. And Jack said he didn't know why Bob had stopped shooting. Well, Bob had told me. He says, I'm going to go for the assist award. <laughs> <laughs> so I told him. He had Jack, other plans. He was headed for the, he wanted the assist award. But, but, but coach needed scoring. <laughs> <laughs> talked to him and uh, he started shooting yeah. again. So. But you know, what's different, I think, between your kids, Bill, Bernie, and Bob, and maybe some others, if, if coach is in their face, I'm sure there were times when you probably said something to coach about that, but, but, they were so coachable, right? I mean, they were coaches in their own right that I don't know this, you know this, but it didn't seem to get them down. They knew what coach wanted, whereas other kids and other parents would be looking at it from a whole different perspective. Yes, they think they're picking on their kids right, or something. Right, right. Technically, he, he was just trying to make them better mm -hmm. and trying to let them know what he wanted. Did, did you do. ever say anything to him about... Uh, I think you're a little too rough on Bernie tonight or <laughs> during the game. or No, but uh, in the year Bernie graduated, it's 1980, and they had had a great season. Right. And, and they got beat. Uh, <laughs> tough one. It, it, was, it was the tough, tough year. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not a tough year. It was tough after mm -hmm. they got beat. I felt so sorry for Bernie, but uh, <laughs> it was just one of those things. They, nothing went right. Yeah. They dribbled off their it, feet. It, it, was, it, was, it was incredible. Yeah, and uh, I remember so. coming back from Indiana State. I was just a freshman, going to the sectional, and we would get behind. It's okay. We're going to catch up. We get behind. We're going to catch up. <laughs> and like you said, nothing would go right, and it started in your mind: Is this really going to happen? The Washington Catholic, which, by the way, Washington Catholic actually was pretty good back in those days, but but we were better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that had to be a tough night. Yeah. yeah. Especially for Bernie, it was his last game. Last game. Yeah. So, yeah. but. Uh, and then the other one that I remember, 1963, when they lost in the yeah. Junior G's year. Well, it so happened that was the year uh, Bob was just a baby, and he was sick for, I think we had him in every hospital around here, and he was in the hospital at Evansville. But, okay. And we went down there that Sunday after the game. Of course, the doctor asked Jack, what happened? What happened? We go to, you know, where is it? He wasn't in any mood to talk. The wrong to person to ask. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. uh, mm -hmm. we finally uh, got found out mm -hmm. what was wrong with him, and he's been healthy ever since. Mm -hmm. So um, there's there's no doubt that over the coach's years, there have been players who have been disgruntled with the coach. There have been parents disgruntled with the coach. Uh, maybe they quit. Maybe you know lack of playing time. Whatever it was, that happens everywhere. Mm -hmm. But did you find yourself in the middle of any of that? They might come to the house upset um, or anything at all? No, I don't remember that. I know they've, they've had people come from other 
towns to talk to him about maybe transferring their kids, but he never would go with that. <laughs> transferring <laughs> your children? No, their kids. Their kids their here. Kids oh, really? Here. To play for coach? Yes. Yeah. But, uh, well, it was usually if things weren't going the way they wanted sure. to do at the yeah. other school, yeah. so they okay. would be amateur. Mm -hmm. well, okay. He never was one for recruiting like <laughs> But, but how satisfying is it? I, I know it is for Coach, and I have to believe it is for you as well. When, um, you know, we talk about the Ligoti basketball family, and, and I think of people like Wayne Flick and others who have such respect for Coach, and they show it. You know, they come back and they support uh, Coach and the family. But that's got to be gratifying for you too, because there's so many more of those than maybe a few of those disgruntled, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah I think so. Yeah. Um, some of the more memorable games for you, do you remember, or seasons? We talked about 1970 a little bit, um, but do you remember that being one of, if not the most special season that you remember? Because we came out of nowhere. I mean, it, it was it was just, I think we were on national news maybe, and it was just, it was just quite yeah, the ride. Sports Illustrated. Sports that. Illustrated, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, well, I don't know. I, uh, remember the 1970 mm -hmm. um, I mean you were young still and you were along for the ride and it was just <laughs> it was just a magical time yes it was um, Bob uh, not Bob Bill and Wayne Flick were sitting on each side of me and <laughs> they said that I screamed so hard after that game was over that that we won mm -hmm. that's I think when Jack Went down the hall, ran down the gym floor or something. Everybody said, Where's he gone eight or something? Which game was this? That this, was in 70, wasn't This it? was the semi state win? Yeah. Then at Evansville? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So and yeah. they said they thought they'd never be able to hear again. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah. And, that was, and then, uh, of course, the 75 team. I mean, oh, with, yeah. with Bill obviously with captaining, yeah. captaining that team. Uh, I, I don't know that I've ever seen uh, a better floor leader than Bill. Uh, I mean, everybody had their roles, but obviously it all worked around Bill. And and I'll, I'll say this, when you think about those four other players, talented, sure, multi-talented, really talented, maybe not, but that was a great team. Do you agree with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the role good, players, really you know. Good, the, yeah. 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 And done great things. Uh -huh. So 75, we, we almost <laughs> became the Milan. Yes, I know. Um, how disappointing was it when we lost? Was it was it in, in, the, in the, the mother's mind, the wife's mind? Was it what a magical ride, it's over? Or were you extremely disappointed? Do you remember the feeling? Well, yes, I was. I really wanted to win. <laughs> I wanted it for Jack and I wanted it for Bill. Because uh, you never because, know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it was a it was a hard mm -hmm. to lose, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, but then we come back and think, well, look what you've done. You yeah. know? So how yeah. far they've come and and had so many good players through mm -hmm. the years and good teams and, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, so we just. Had to be thankful, and it was so much easier winning all the time. <laughs> well, we, we we did our share, didn't we? Yes, we, we did. did our share. I remember we won. We went to the state in '70. Now, remember, I'm only nine or ten years old, so I might not get this right. But '71, I think we went to the semi-state, did we not? And yes. lose to Floyd Central. I remember listening to that game down on Poplar Street. I think we had bunk beds. And crying after that game because I thought we were supposed to win every game. You know, yeah. we were supposed to be at the state every year after that 1970 team, and and uh, that that was just again just just such a great time. And I know it was for you yeah. as well. Uh, as difficult as it can be at times for a coach's wife, and it sounds like though you carp you compartmentalized a lot of that yourself, and it wasn't as difficult as somebody from the outside might think the angst. But what were the rewards of being a coach's wife during his tenure, which, well, was, which was most of your life. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's true. Well, the rewards was seeing the satisfaction of his 
accomplishments mm -hmm. and uh, what he was able to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that was a part of me. And I felt like I helped by taking care of the family yeah. and doing all mm -hmm. I could do to help him so he could do what he mm -hmm. wanted to do and how he could, so he could coach. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where I got my satisfaction. Was I knew I was helping him. Yeah. What do you remember about the night in Indianapolis when we had Jack Butcher night, uh, the Indiana Pacers? I was up there, as was so many people to support the coach. And uh, I might even tear up a little bit here as, <laughs> as I think about that. But, uh, but, but for us, it was very special for Lagodi. But how was it for you and Coach and the family? Well, it was it was very special, uh, and. Uh, all the kids were there, and most of the grandkids, and we even had two great grands there. Oh, did and you? And of course, we had, you know, they gave us that box. And, yes. You know, we yes. could stay there. Yeah. And, and uh, so, but uh, it was uh, very special. Uh, somebody told me they didn't think I ever stopped smell smiling. Yeah. <laughs> well, why would you? Yeah. yeah. And uh, just mm -hmm. to stand down there on that floor mm -hmm. and that. Uh, have him being acknowledged for what he had accomplished. Mm -hmm. It was uh, very gratifying. So, mm -hmm. so, so 2000, 2002, he calls it quits. Again, were, were there conversation each year as to whether he would move forward, uh, you know, at a certain point, or was, or, or did there come a conversation where it said, this is it, this is the end, I'm done? Um, you know what I'm saying? Was, was yeah. it something that he thought of over the years and finally now was the time or it was a one time? Well, I think, <laughs> I don't know where Jack remembers this or not, but in 1970, we were still, a, uh, we were in the hotel room, hadn't left yet. And he says, where do I go from here? <laughs> Legitimate so question. I didn't know whether I was, yeah. he was going to. Step away at that, that time, 1970. But then that didn't last very long. No, so, no. So he got mm -hmm. back into it. But mm -hmm. other than that, oh, there was, you know, different years. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I was. But, uh, but but do you were you ready for him to retire when when he did, or was it strictly up to him and you were fine either way? Um, well, I think I was fine either way. Um, the year that they had the coaches box. <laughs> yeah. I, I always thought it was a benefit for him. I don't know whether that's true or not, but go ahead. It, I didn't go, I think, that whole year mm -hmm. after they started that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just... <laughs> what, what, why is that? You just couldn't see him restricted? I, yeah. Okay. I, I, he could, I just felt like he couldn't coach like he... <laughs> really? You know? Okay. And, uh, and you did not go to the game. I didn't watch that. Okay. Interesting. So. See, there, there we found out something new. I, <laughs> uh, I don't think they... I don't even know if they have it. If they have it, they don't use it anymore. No, I know yeah, that. I don't but, think they do either. But that, that's say. interesting. You just couldn't watch, I couldn't watch him that. being restricted yeah. from, from going wherever he wanted on the sideline. Yeah, you may, can he, couldn't even stand that. Yeah. yeah. You just thought it was ridiculous. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Okay. I just, <laughs> of course, there's different things I thought was ridiculous. But, uh, <laughs> Any others come to mind that you want to share? <laughs> no. Well, no? I can't think of them okay. right now. But, All right. Uh, your, so. your children. Again, talking to Donna, she reminded me the other day, seven children, seven college degrees, <laughs> eight, including Coach Butchers, right? And, you know, she just said you were, you were, you were her rock. You were their rock and, and the foundation. And uh, I don't know how you wouldn't have been, but do you think back and wonder how you did that? Not you, but, but both you and Coach. How you raised seven children, seven and I don't mean just seven children. These are exceptional human beings. Well, thank you. They really are an exceptional athlete still. Pickleball, Marina, <laughs> Donna. Uh, come on. I mean, I can't even go there. But uh, do you ever sit back and wonder how that happened? Well, there have been times that uh, I look at the kids and everything they've done. And uh, they're all good kids. We never had any trouble with them, you know, the drinking and the drugs. Mm -hmm. and, well, I'm not saying they didn't drink, but they, uh, but uh, they, you know, mostly 
had their own personalities. They're all different, but they're all good. Uh, they all worked hard. Um, and, you know, I know Marina, the first year she went to college, uh, she was in the dorm and she had a girl, a girl, the girl with her. Well, she had a terrible time because this girl had her boyfriend with her all the time. Mm -hmm. And many nights, Marini would sleep in the, well, just one of the rooms. Oh, just anywhere and she could. Anywhere yeah, where she could. Mm -hmm. So uh, she wanted to quit. And, and where, did, where did she go? IU. IU, okay. And uh, Jack says, no, you have to finish out the year. If you don't want to go back, we'll let her talk about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, uh, the next, she did finish out the year. Uh, she was miserable, <laughs> but she did go. And uh, then uh, the next year, she didn't start. She didn't go. She worked at Dairy Master. Okay. Did some cooking and other things there. And uh, but then she said, "I will go back if I can commute." So we had that uh, little Vegas, mm -hmm. and uh, she commuted. She did all the rest of the, the other three years. The other three years. Uh, when uh, Carlene started, she commuted with her, and then she led, mm -hmm. lived in the dorm or apartment with uh, Nancy Bell. Mm -hmm. That's what Carlene did. Mm -hmm. So she had a good yeah. roommate. But, uh, and then uh, they've all got uh, masters equivalent. Wow. Except Carlene. Carlene, after she finished teaching, she didn't get her masters, but uh, she stayed home. Mm -hmm. So, so let me see if I can get this. So, so I'm going to try to go down in order. I know I can get this, but Marina, she's back here in this area. Is yes, that right? She moved back out of here. It's so. great to see her every now because I hadn't seen her for years and years, and great to see her back in the area. Um, Donna or Carlene? Which which one was next? Bill was next. Oh, Bill was next. Absolutely. Bill's in Chandler. Chandler. Just yeah. saw him play pickleball with him last weekend. <laughs> he just started. He's pretty good too. Yeah. He did too. Same as me, but he's better than I am already. <laughs> Uh, and then, then was it Carlene Carly. or Donna after that? And where's Carlene? She lives in, in Carmel, in Carmel. West, Westfield, I think. Okay. Yes, it is. It's one of those. Yeah. Areas, so. And then uh, Donna is here. Uh -huh. uh, Bernie is Roseanne. Roseanne. She, Rosie's here. Yes, yeah. she lives there. They live out the lake. Yeah. Bernie's in Washington. Yes. Bobby's here. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so the only one that's really out of the area now is Carlene. Uh -huh. Carlene. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, we keep uh, thinking, Grant. but uh, um, she has uh, a grandson. Uh, we had a Carlene's son died. He was only 29 years old, and that was uh, it's been uh, that was hard, very sure. hard. It was uh, mm -hmm. unexpected. He had gone to the doctor, and they said, oh maybe he had the flu. Well, he mm -hmm. went home, went upstairs, went to bed. And, Wow, wow. His wife found him dead. So, yeah. And he had a little boy. Mm -hmm. That's been about seven years ago, six years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know where she'll come back this way. Or not. Mm -hmm. I don't, she does have a daughter that uh, lives there. Mm -hmm. uh, not with her, but she has her apartment. Yeah. There. How many grandchildren do you have? He has 16 grandchildren. And how many great? We've got six great right now and two on the way. Two on the way. On now the I'm way. not going to ask you to name all of them, <laughs> but if I did, would you be able to in a relatively quick matter of time? Well, I think so. You think you would? Yeah. Okay. All right. So Mar uh, Marina has Jake. And then okay. Bill has Brian, and uh, she... <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll trust you. You, you do. Will. Will. Brian yeah. and Will. He's named after. <laughs> yeah, you should Jack know that one. And, yeah. so Jack and Bill and Will. Yeah. So. Yeah, we have those. And then uh, Carlene has a daughter, Kayla. She lives in Florida. Okay. Like I said, Eric's mm -hmm. dead. And then uh, Emily mm -hmm. lives there. Mm -hmm. And then Donna has uh, David and Chelsea. Chelsea is the one that is expecting. Yeah, and, and Donna came in. It was Los Bravos where I saw Donna. And that little girl's just beautiful. Oh. She's just beautiful. She's a sweet Isn't she? <laughs> yeah. We love her. Yeah. So, and then uh, Roseanne has two. She has Samantha mm -hmm. and Ben. Yeah. And then Bernie has two, and that's Anna and Colton, Anna Marie and Colton. And then Bob, he has Tony and Bridget, mm -hmm. his, and then uh, Nancy has the two. Right. Okay. So
So if there, is there one thing that those people who, other than those who are closest to you, what, what is it that we might be interested about Rita Butcher? Is there one thing that we don't know that, that, that is interesting uh, in your life or to you that it'd be nice for us to know? Are you musically inclined? Uh, um, no, I was in the choir for <laughs> I know ten you were. times for about twenty-five years, <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. not on my own. I'm not. I can sing with the group. Yeah, yeah. But uh, you're not a magician or anything no, like that. So. I never did address okay. to that, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, the girls, <laughs> I asked them that question, and. and uh, they said, well, you walked and ran before it was uh, cool. Did you? <laughs> oh, yeah. Just for oh, exercise? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. I did that. Did you, play, did you play tennis, too? Yes. I thought so, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, it was late in life. Right, I, right. But uh, I never could beat your mother. Well, hey, <laughs> you know, and, and Mom was pretty competitive in golf, too, yeah. as you guys would know as well. But, uh, but yeah, but those were, those were good times, too. When I, when I say good times, people at that age... We're out there playing golf, playing tennis. And I see at that age, it's probably the age I am right now, you know, and <laughs> and, and we try to get out a little bit. But uh, yeah. Well, I tried golf, but I had <laughs> trouble with my shoulder. And then... <laughs> well, the last, the, the only golf story I have is the last time I ever played, and I'm guessing 15, 20 years ago, seriously. Um, I just came off of night shift at Kimball. So it was a Friday, so I was off for the weekend, but I'd up, been up all night. I had one particular bad shot, and that was it. I threw my, I'm a very mild mannered folks, person, person <laughs> folks, but I threw my clubs down, my bag. I left. The last I've seen of them oh, is the last wow. I've seen of a golf course <laughs> as far as playing any sort of serious golf, but uh, I'm just tired. I'm, I'm sure, but I did yeah. go back and they didn't have my clubs. But I usually end with asking the person I'm talking to is there anything else that we didn't talk about? Um, that, that you feel like um, you, you would like to talk about or, or expand upon some of the things we did talk about? Well, one of the main things when I was growing up, of course, uh, you know, they announced the 41 about Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. was gone. And uh, the way the people came together at, at that, and especially I remember church, People, we would have novenas. People would go to church, mm -hmm. and the people were at church for all the masses. And then, even in uh, different areas, say the street we lived on or the, the block, they had what they called block rosary. Really? They go to somebody's house, and they'd all say the rosary but, uh, together. Yeah. And um, just things like that. Uh, seems like my life was really all around about my religion. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that wasn't unusual, was it? No. And uh, my uh, grandparents, uh, Grandpa and Gody, uh, they were very religious. I remember seeing my grandpa when he was out in the field plowing, he pushed one of those, you mm -hmm. know, one of those. And uh, he would have his rosary. The same no kidding. And, yeah. and uh, they would uh, just... They stopped and said the Angelus three times a day because mm -hmm. they were up. And just, uh, I know there's not a whole lot of people that have the background like that that right. I have. Yeah. And, uh, and you wouldn't trade it for anything? No, you? I love it. <laughs> yeah. And as I get older and I see the way things are going, and I think I would just love to see it go back that way. Yeah. That, it's not going to. It's not. Yeah. I'm afraid it's not, not, not like that to. anyway. But, but that was uh, that was right around the wartime, right when. Yeah. How did you get your news back then? Did you have radio? Radio. radio. Okay. So you remember sitting around uh, the radio? Well, actually, it was a it was December the eighth, so it was a holy day, it would be the day after the bombing, mm -hmm. okay. and we can just come home from church. And, and wow. So, and uh, so did, did you do you remember? Did you, did you know we were close to war? I mean, were you able to get news that this could happen? This is imminent at any time. Well, yeah, you could get reports and. Uh, but I remember they used to have, uh, in case it was a airplane strike or something, mm -hmm. they had, uh, I guess you'd say, air, what was it? air raid. Yeah. 
and yeah. they would practice for air raids mm -hmm. and uh, everybody would have to turn all the lights off in the house everywhere it's supposed to be dark and they had uh, the different men that weren't in service that were home they would go around and check my dad was one of them they'd go around and check and make sure everybody was complying with the rules and staying in the dark and they would do that every once in a while around i don't know what mm -hmm. the schedule was but i remember doing that yeah and think think about what you've seen over your 90 years <laughs> quite different <laughs> quite, quite different but, yes, but the technology uh, yeah. from from the time you were born to today uh, is yeah. well this right yeah. well mr butcher thank you so much uh, i hope that you. wasn't too bad for you well, and, uh, yeah, yeah, we'll, uh, no, it was very nice. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Well, I so. enjoy it. And I always enjoy talking to you when, when I get a chance, and obviously Coach Butcher, but um, thank you so much. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. So now you know a little bit more about this Indiana neighbor, Mrs. Jack Butcher, Rita Butcher, and we, we hope you enjoyed it. We hope that you enjoy the segments that we do. So we're, we're, we're covering local heroes, basically, and, and these are local heroes in Ligoti as well. So again, we, we thank you, and... Uh, Who's up next? I don't know, but it'll be soon. But thanks for watching.